My name's Rowdy Harrington. I'm the director of Roadhouse, and I'm going to spend uh, this time talking a little bit about the picture and how it came about for me. This opening shot of the, the sign in the parking lot was made by our art department so that we could have this tilt down that, that you just saw and we crane down to the Ferrari that comes in. And for the shot, I had asked our producer to find a girl who had great legs. And uh, they brought this gal in from Italy. Uh, she was a model and specialized in, I guess, stocking ads and things and really did have tremendous legs, as you can see. I believe the name of this bar was actually the Arsenal. It was in Orange County. It's Kevin Ty, a wonderful actor. As you can see, we had uh, quite a few extras in this scene. Smoke, music, and lots of fun. very fortunate to have uh, such a great cast in this picture. Patrick Swayze was coming off Dirty Dancing. Kelly Lynch had done a number of pictures and had a contract with United Artists, so we were fortunate to get her. Uh, Sam Elliott, who was uh, just a wonderful actor and, and just tremendous uh, as Wade Garrett, Kevin Ty, and uh, all our villains, uh, all of whom were really good martial artists. When I cast the picture, I wanted to make sure everybody that was uh, going to fight could fight, make it look very realistic. We had nine major fights in the picture. Uh, fight choreography was done by uh, Benny Arquidez with our stunt coordinator, Charlie Petrini. And we tried to vary them so that we had lots of different kinds of, uh, um, you know, events going on for each fight. Okay, Dalton. I've always wanted to try you. I think I can take you. Outside. And here we see so here we Dalton, the Zen bouncer. Come on, come on, let's do it. Go, dirt ball, where you going? Hey, hey, hey Moose, hey. get back here. Dickhead. What are you guys, seven dwarfs or something? Get out of here. So this, this is a, a real location that we shot in, but the following sequence that you're going to see here, this was a set we built. And in order to tie it into the arsenal, um, we had a rear screen projection. So the shot you just saw Kevin Ty there was at the arsenal, but now this is in a, on the stage. I don't know you. And you'll see there, uh, out that window is actually rear screen projection. Of uh, It's a plate we shot of the bar so that we could do this scene with, uh, with more uh, control. It used to be a sweet deal. Now it's the kind of place that they sweep up the eyeballs after closing. Anyway, I've come into a little bit of money. I'd like to make a better life for myself. 
I need somebody to help me clean the place up. I need the best. Wade Garrett's the best. Wade Garrett's getting old. He's still the best. Roadhouse is actually, you. when you think about it, a, a modern western. I mean, it it's a cowboy movie set now. You know, Dalton is a you know a unique hero with with a set of skills that no one else has. He's going to go to a small town that's corrupt. And he's going to have to take on the kingpin. I run the show completely. When the job's done, I walk. I've got your plane ticket right here. I don't fly. Too dangerous. Well, when do I expect you? Oh. I'll get there. Dalton, you all right? Just a scratch. By the way, Oscar, bandstand's all yours. What's that? Cinematographer on this picture is Dean Cundy, who's uh, tremendously Great. talented. And um, I was very fortunate to get him. As you can see, the lighting in um, every scene in the picture is really very, very well done. When we get out to... Uh, Emmett's place. You'll see some huge lighting setups that are just spectacular. And we saw the credit for the editor, Frank Uriosti, who did a phenomenal job. He's just absolutely a brilliant guy. I picked these cars, uh, the Riviera, for uh, Dalton, for his beater car, because I like the headlight deal that opened up. And uh, you'll see later when he picks the second one that that's really what he's concerned about. And this, of course, is his hot car. There was some consternation when I picked this car to be Dalton's main car uh, because we were going to eventually blow it up. And... Uh, it's a rather expensive car to shoot over a wall and explode. This is actually up uh, near Fresno, this particular town. The double deuce that you see here is actually a facade. Um, all that exists are those two sides that you see. There's nothing behind it. And uh, we built that out in uh, Valencia. And uh, across the parking lot, we built a facade for Red West's auto parts. And, uh, you know, we we're going to blow that up, so it needed to be a facade. Once he goes through the doors, hey, I know him. Once we go through the doors, this is a, this is a sound stage. So the, the interior of the Double Deuce was, was built on a sound stage. And uh, you see there Jeff Healy. An interesting story how we got Jeff. It was actually written in the script that there was a, a blind guitar player who played the guitar in his lap. And I believe the writer, David Lee Henry, uh, actually saw Jeff Healy in Canada. And... Uh, when we talked to our music supervisor, Jimmy Iovine, about who could play that part, he said, I've seen this guy. And he brought uh, Jeff Healy down, and uh, he auditioned and got the job. We put him with a, uh, an acting coach because he had not acted before, and uh, he actually did a, a wonderful job, in addition to entertaining the crew brilliantly. Not here. Follow me to the bathroom. If you, uh, you saw scratched into the pillar there, Buddy's Corner. That's Patrick's nickname, Buddy. So all of this is pretty much as described in the script. The chicken wire around the stage and people throwing bottles and all that and 
when the first day that we shot on this set, um, Joel Silver came in and said, doesn't look beat up enough. You know, the idea was that we were going to transition to um, a really beautiful club, and uh, so he wanted it to be even more down. So uh, the boys went at it and really tore it up pretty good. not drinking year out of here. I have to say this was a lot of fun to make. Hey, don't let him bother you. You know, it's a little bigger than life, this whole thing, and uh, we, we had a ball doing it with the live music and the humor and lots of fights. Patrick was uniquely qualified to do this picture because he's, he is a martial artist and, yeah. and a dancer, so the choreography of the fights was really um, easy for him, and we were able to do really interesting and elaborate stuff. So uh, we were very lucky to get him. I mean, he is Dalton, that's for sure. This is John Doe from the band X playing the bartender. John also entertained us brilliantly. He is a wonderful guitar player. As you can see, the walls are pretty torn up. And as we go along, Dalton's reign at the Double Deuce, we'll see a transition in the club as it gets nicer and nicer. And the clientele changes, obviously. But this guy with no shirt and that whole deal. Hey, a pizza plate slash! I think we had about 50 stuntmen in this picture. It was a really a remarkable number of people involved in all the different fights and the, and the other stunts. Thanks, man. So you played pretty good for a blind white boy. Yeah, and I thought you'd be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> no, now you're doing it. Good to see you. Same here, man. Oh, the boys and I heard you were coming into town. Man, this toilet is worse than the one that we worked in Dayton. Really? Oh, man, it's a mean scene around here, man. Blood on the floor in this joint every night. Hey, Hank, you know who that is? Who? Oh. Jimmy Iovine worked with uh, Jeff Healy to pick songs that were going to, um, you know, really work for our picture. And there's a, 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 you know, a real spectrum of, of rock and roll, including the Doors Roadhouse, and uh, it's just really a lot of fun. Bullshit. What's your name, buddy? Coffee Black. Yeah, all right, thanks, Joe. <laughs> Ever seen a better pair of attitudes? Fine, ain't they? <laughs> Tell you what. For 20 bucks, you can kiss him. Are you kidding? Ten a kiss, here and now. Go ahead, do it, go on. Go on. Come on. Obviously, I didn't write this scene. Ten a kiss, go ahead. But the picture does have legs, you gotta say that. Hey, buddy, what are you doing? Are you going to kiss him or not? <laughs> I can't. What do you mean you can't? <laughs> I ain't got 20 bucks. <laughs> what? You... <laughs> and off we go. <laughs> Get up!
we did have a sense of humor about all this stuff. Uh, as you'll see, there's there's comedy in in uh, in the midst of these fights. You know, it's sort of like a Keystone Cops melee. You know, Dalton standing there, totally unfazed. Dame's getting punched. This guy, he'll get his. This guy playing Morgan is a major wrestler. Really a funny guy. Of course, the band plays through it all. I got a mirror. Oh, shit. Hey, how'd you like to tell us what the fuck's going on? You gonna help us out or not? I'll let you know. You know, I heard you had balls big enough to come in a dump truck, but uh, you don't look like much to me. <laughs> Opinions vary. Cody. Oh, later. All right, man. Take care. Later. See you guys. Take care. Dalton character. What's his story? Story is, you fuck with him and he'll seal your fate. Yeah. So far, he hadn't shown me shit. This was actually our first day of shooting. You'll see the Riviera there. It's a funny story, actually. I, the night before the first day of shooting, my wife and my son got food poisoning. Got up in the middle of the night, ill. And I had had the same dinner they had. And I was totally concerned that I was going to get to work on my first day of this movie okay. and uh, and lose it. But uh, I think I was nervous enough that uh, whatever the germ was, I killed it. This was the first studio picture that I made. I had made one independent film. And then obviously coming on to a big picture like this was really exciting. This location is uh, on the Kings River, up near Fresno, and it's on actually on uh, the, uh, the Kings Ranch. And we uh, we built this house that you see now and the barn. The idea was that uh, Emmett had a place that was right across the river from Brad Wesley. So you'll see the beautiful home across the river, and of course. Wesley doesn't like the idea that there's this little horse farm there. Morning. But uh, we had some major builds on this Anyone movie. Got a room to rent? As you can see, this is uh, built to look old and like it's been there a long, long time. And um, in fact, it's brand new. You honest? Yes, sir. Expect me to believe that? No, sir. I had asked that we had uh, line of sight from this loft over to Wesley's estate. And as you'll see, there it is.
we wanted to have a grand entrance for Ben Gazzara, and uh, we thought the helicopter was a terrific way to start. We were very lucky to get Ben to play Brad Wesley. He really got it. I mean, he had a lot of fun with the part. Wesley's bigger than life, and he has some outrageous dialogue, and Ben delivered it with real panache. I swear he does that just to piss me off. Who does? Brad Wesley. Like horses, do you? They like me. You wouldn't steal them, would you? No, sir. Calling me sir is like putting an elevator in an outhouse. Don't belong. <laughs> I'm Emmett. I'm Dalton. So what do you think? Well, I'll take it. Must have been 20 people look at that room this past year. No phone, no television, no conditioned air, no tolerance for the fragrance of nature. Nobody wanted it. How come you do? Just too persuasive for me, I guess. It ain't the money, you understand, but if I don't charge you something, the Presbyterians around here are likely to pray for my ruination. How does $100 a month strike you? Fine. You can afford that much? If it keeps you in the good graces of the church. Ain't it peculiar how money seems to do that very thing? Now this, this is a new double deuce. I put a lot of money and time into this. And to protect my investment, I've hired... This is a Luma crane shot. We float over the table, so we're, the camera is mounted on a big arm with a hothead and the operators at the other end. Dalton? Morgan, you're out of here. What the fuck are you talking about? You don't have the right temperament for the trade. You asshole! What am I supposed to do? There's always barber college. <laughs> You're a dead man. You're out too. We're selling booze here, not drugs. Thank you. Anybody else here dealing? I'm telling you straight. It's my way or the highway. He's laying down the law. So anybody who wants to walk, do it now. It's an important scene. Establish the relationship between Dalton and the bouncers. And as you'll see, some some manage to fall right. into a system and some don't. People who really want to have a good time won't come to a slaughterhouse. And we've got entirely too many troublemakers here. Too many 40-year-old uh, adolescents, felons, power drinkers, and trustees of modern chemistry. It's going to change. And that sure sounds good. But a lot of the guys who come in here, we can't handle one-on-one. -on -one. Even two on one. Don't worry about it. All you have to do is follow three simple rules. One, never underestimate your opponent. Expect the unexpected. Two, take it outside. Never start anything inside the bar unless it's absolutely necessary. And three, be nice. Come on, honey. If somebody gets in your face and calls you a cocksucker, I want you to be nice. Okay. Ask him to walk. Be nice. If he won't walk, walk him. But be nice. If you can't walk him, one of the others will help you, and you'll both be nice. I want you to remember that it's a job. It's nothing personal. Uh-huh. And called a cocksucker in personal? No. 
It's two nouns combined to elicit a prescribed response. I wonder if somebody calls my mama a whore. <laughs> Is she? <laughs> I want you to be nice until it's time to not be nice. Well, uh, how are we supposed to know when that is? You won't. I'll let you know. You are the bouncers, I am the cooler. All you have to do is watch my back and each other's. And take out the trash. I think one of the interesting things about this picture is that it goes into a world that people really hadn't seen before. Uh, nobody had heard of a cooler. But there was a guy who was in charge of all the bouncers who was just there to make sure that uh, everything goes down the way he prescribes. This is a Sears credit card. Beverly, Agnes. <laughs> it's okay, Bear. The friend's mine. Hey, but don't oh, It's said... okay. Trust me. I just play girl. Let it on, let it. Let it. I'm not sure where Joel got all the girls for this, the bar scenes. I think they had a lot of Playboy bunnies, and it was uh, fairly remarkable. Thinking about you. Steve. <laughs> Yo, Steve. Your history. But I'm on my break. Stay on it. Shit. You were real hot that last set. Yeah, we were warm. You've got quite a little enterprise going here. What? going through a bottle every 30 minutes, you're skimming the till for six shots a bottle on drafts one every ten. I figure he's costing you about 150 a night. So We shot this film with uh, Panavision Anamorphic. And uh, the advantage that we had, uh, obviously, is the widescreen format, which gives you the opportunity in terms of composition to, to make some really big frames. And uh, you can stack people up and, and get everybody in. You can see, look how wide this frame is here. I mean, we got everybody in there. Yes. Yeah. As he moves over to the space that's opened, and we got everybody there. It'll get worse before it gets better. So now you know why Dalton bought extra tires. Blue Monday. Oh, it's Blue Monday. This is a Bob Seeger song. Uh, Jimmy Iovine got Bob to cover just for the picture. And it's a uh, very fitting. This particular scene. 
Not that great. See that Dalton's reading uh, Legends of the Fall there. It's a book that I was quite fond of. As you can imagine, these are some really big lighting setups. You know, when you're talking about having uh, the view from across the river of all this, big deal. And I, I asked Dean Cundy to make sure that um, whenever we shot an interior of this loft, that um, we lit it up bright enough so that we could also see exteriors. Oh, Essentially, if, uh, if you're working at what you'd be in a normal interior in terms of f-stop, um, it would make the windows burn out. So how'd you find me? Oh, I, um, it wasn't too hard. I mean, you know, I mean... What did you do there last night? What do you mean? Well, you fired the bartender, Pat. He was skimming. <laughs> you should not have done that, Dalton. Yeah, why is that? Well, you just shouldn't have, that's all. <laughs> Here you go. Breakfast. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. What is the joke? Well, there's no joke. I just think I'm looking at a dead man, though. Seems everywhere I go, I hear that same joke. Yeah, well, something tells me you bring it on yourself. Men Gazer and his glory. Life could be a dream. If I could take you up in paradise up above. If you would tell me that I'm the only one that you love. Life could be We had a crane mounted on our camera car for this shot. Every time I look at you. Something is on my mind. Da, 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 da. If you do what I want you to, baby, we'd be so far. This still cracks me up to this day. I mean. Ben just took that roll on and he didn't flinch, not once. And it's some pretty broad stuff. This is the facade we built. And when you come around here on this side, you'll see the facade of the double deuce. And again, we're going to later blow up this, uh, the auto parts. Well, I like her, so, uh... So we, we needed to build it. It'll take a few days. Hey, all I can get you now. Great. And here we'll transition into, uh, a real auto parts store that was down the road. You the boy from the double deuce? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I kind of figured you'd be by. You want to put in a standing order now? No, I'll pay as I go. <laughs> Dalton, Red Webster, how long are you going to be in town? Not very long. This uh, actor is uh, Red West, and uh, really? what happened? Oh, I got married. he worked with Elvis Presley for many, many years. He was one of his best friends, grew up with him. Red was also a martial artist and uh, one of Elvis's bodyguards. And he's just a remarkable man, very interesting character. It was really toward the end of the picture, I never mentioned anything about, uh, or asked him anything about Elvis uh, until the very end of the movie after we'd gotten to know each other pretty well and we were sitting on a stoop waiting for them to blow up the auto parts. And I just asked him, uh, what was it like, Red? And he said, Rowdy, you wouldn't believe it. He said, when Elvis walked on the stage, this one place in Atlanta he was telling me about, he said, the house, the whole theater just shook. going to clean that place up. Bad element over there. Well, anything I can do for you. Thanks, Red. Here we set up a little tension here with Marshall Teague. He plays Jimmy. 
Wesley's hatchet man. Well read. Beautiful day, isn't it? it was. Patrick studied uh, Tai Chi for this scene. The idea is that uh, he is the Zen bouncer. Ben was in Italy doing pictures uh, when we called him. Uh, he hadn't worked in Hollywood for a while, and uh, I was a huge fan of the film St. Jack. So I mentioned to Joel Silver uh, that I thought Ben would be a great Brad Wesley, and we brought him in, and uh, he agreed to do the picture, and we're really lucky that he did. You'll see uh, the walls are getting repaired, the place is on its way up, little by little. Dalton is having his influence. Problem? Here's no problem. Just a little mistake is all. What's that? This office was also on the sound stage, and the proximity to the bar you know, is what you actually see with the window. Why don't you explain uh, because we had the transition in terms of this fight up, sure between the office and Mr. the bar. Mr. has changed his mind. That's all you need to know, son. No, I'm afraid I'm going to have to know a little bit more than that. And Mr. Tillman may own this bar, but the liquor he serves is supplied to him by Brad Wesley. And Pat McGurn is in the employ of Mr. Wesley, his uncle, not Mr. Tillman. You see, I'm staying, and you're going. Oh, really? That's right. Sit down. Come on, Dalton, you and me, right now. Right now! <laughs> What's the matter, you chicken dick? What are you afraid of, me? <laughs> that it, Dalton? You scared to fight me? You big, bad Dalton. What, do you want to kiss and make up? <laughs> Jesus Christ. One of the things I did uh, when we choreographed these fights, I shot a lot of it on Steadicam so that I could move the camera uh, in order to sell the punches. Essentially what happens with, uh, with fight choreography, you know, these guys aren't really hitting each other in the head. So it's up to the actor who's taking the punch to sell it. And the angle of the camera has to be just right in order for that punch to look like a hit. And with the Steadicam, we're able to move the camera so that we get a sequence of punches that look like hits. And it keeps the, uh, it keeps the thing moving, and it's more dynamic. How'd this happen? Natural causes. Looks like a knife wound. Like I said. You're a bouncer? Mm-hmm. Double deuce. Nice place. They send a lot of business my way. I'm hoping to change that. All by yourself? 
Well, Mr. Dalton, you may add nine staples to your dossier of 31 broken bones, two bullet wounds, nine puncture wounds, and four stainless steel screws. That's an estimate, of course. I'll give you a local. No, thank you. Do you enjoy One of the things you'll notice about the art direction of this picture is that um, we do use a lot of primary colors in the wardrobe and in the sets. You know, we have a lot of neon and, you know, bright reds and blues. And that was a choice that I made in order to uh, sort of accentuate how larger than life all of this was. It was a bit of a cartoon in a sense. So I wanted to have the, the very bright primary colors. Any particular discipline? No, not really. Uh, You'll see lots of it. Man's search for faith, that sort of shit. Come up with any answers? Not too many. How's a guy like you end up... Patrick chose Roadhouse as his next picture after Dirty Dancing, which had become a phenomenal success. And uh, it was interesting to work with him at that point in time uh, in, in his career uh, because he was dealing with fame. I mean, he had gone from... A character who'd been in a number of pictures that some people knew to somebody that everybody knew. And in particular, the women were just crazy about him. And uh, when we shot in Fresno, we had to get uh, bodyguards uh, to keep the women from away from his motorhome. When he would come out to go to the set, they'd mob him, try to rip his clothes off. It was incredible. I never saw anything like it. It must have been what it was like for Elvis or some of these other rock stars. But... Uh, I have to say, viewing it close up, it was not pleasant. You know, it was not all it's cracked up to be, because uh, people would really, you know, they literally try.